everyone, welcome back to the Analog Wonderland YouTube channel. My name is Emma, I am the marketing assistant at Analog Wonderland, and I'm here today to tell you all about. I've opened the box already, but Virgin Panko film. Um, I'm still not 100% sure how you pronounce this. I've heard burger, I've heard burger, I've heard burger. No, I said that already, burger. So, I apologise if I'm mispronouncing the name of this film, but either way, this video promises some great sample photos, customer reviews, some opinions from the film community on Twitter. So I hope you enjoy and let's get into the review. Whether you are new to film photography or a long time analogue enthusiast, our channel covers all things film. From tips and tricks, film reviews to how-to videos. Subscribe now and keep those notifications turned on so that you never miss a beat. Happy shooting! So I've actually never shot this film personally but from the look of the reviews and opinions I've seen so far I think I'm going to really love it. It is one of the best selling films on our website under our black and white 35mm film and it has over 50 reviews from our customers, most of them who have rated it four stars and up so I'm sure you're going to really enjoy shooting this film. It's definitely a well-loved film in the community. It's quite a new film. It was actually launched in 2017 so not very long ago at all and at the time it was the first new black and white emulsion that had been launched in over a decade so it was a really big deal and very exciting the future of film. Now we're seeing new film releases quite often. We've had quite a few this year. Back in 2017, you know, maybe that was something to throw a party over. <laughs> Very exciting news and it's clearly done well because this film is here to stay. It's still a bestseller. It's still really loved by our community. Worth giving it a go. So when it was launched, it was met with rave reviews from photographers. They really loved its wide exposure latitude, the fact that that gave them a really big margin for error, which is something I personally love in a film, knowing that I can shoot it and not worry too much that the film is gonna handle itself and be all right once it's been processed. Berger is also quite a unique film because it is dual coated. So it's a dual emulsion film. This actually means it's got two different layers of light sensitive chemicals on the film itself. The first layer is silver bromide and the second layer is silver iodide. And um, what this does is promises a very wide exposure latitude. It is 400 box speed, but you have options to shoot it from 200 all the way up to 1600 ISO, so there's plenty of room for experimentation. It's not something you have to be worried about getting perfect in camera. So as for the quality of this film, it is known for its grain, especially in the highlight areas of an image. So if you're shooting landscapes and you have you know, a big big white sky, the grain is going to be very noticeable in your image. But this can give a real a sense of character to a photograph, it's something that I really enjoy. You can play with the latitude on this film by shooting it at different speeds, so you can see on the canister it's got 200 up to 1600 ISO, so it's something we'd encourage you to play with. You can just tick the box and let your lab know how you've shot it and uh, not be too worried about under or over exposing, this film will be just fine. It is available in 35mm and 120 format, so if you want to experiment with, with a different format of photography, you have that option too. And another thing to note is because of the wide latitude, post-processing is very easy, so if you want to push your film, that is a decision you could make when it comes to the developing stages of your film or if you want to let your lab know how you'd like it processed. Uh, pushing it in development can help bring out extra grain or more contrast so you really have a lot of choices with how you're going to affect the final look of this film. There's many, many ways to shoot Berger. In terms of what we'd recommend going out and photographing with this film, it is a 400 ISO film so you have that flexibility. It, will work pretty well in sort of mid light conditions, it will work well with action and sport. But our favourite reviews and customer photos on the website have been portraits and sort of urban and street photography. 
So that's definitely something worth playing with. The main thing our customers have praised it for is its uh, grainy look and its flexibility. I also spoke to the film community on Twitter. So I'm gonna pull up some of their tweets now. There were some sort of divided opinions on this film. I think that's mainly to do with the grain. Some people love grain, some people aren't so for it. But overall, there were some great sample photos I was sent. Good for street and urban photography was a common thought. Jim Grave said it's an acquired taste. Uh, they quite like it when they get it right. It loves sunny days and is a little flat when the sky is overcast, but you can boost the contrast in the editing software of your choosing. Uh, one user, Tony, said he just loved the film. He has no real tips, shot it at box speed and sent it off to a lab. So that's good to know. There's no sort of faffing around with this film. You can just enjoy it for box speed and what it is. One user, A.D. Kerry, did an amazing um, bit of pinhole photography on this film. I think that was with medium format, but nevertheless, same emulsion. And he's got an absolutely beautiful photo. So maybe pinhole is something you'd like to try with this film. The white exposure latitude makes it really suitable for pinhole photography. So that is definitely worth trying. I also really love some of the architectural photos uh, where there's lots of detail in the image and the sort of textures and the brickwork. They've come out really beautifully. Uh, my favourite comment was from Elise who said she was hesitant to recommend it as an everyday film because it's got that very specific look that not everyone will like but she actually compared it to being a bit like a charcoal sketch which I thought was a really brilliant comment that brain bringing out that sort of rough, rugged look to your image, um, lots of texture in the image. We had a few customer reviews as well. Some of them suggested to try out filters with this film so you can really bring out um, some more contrast with it. Brain, again, is very pronounced, especially in flat areas like the sky, but it is a great film for detail. Another important thing to mention is that this film is DX coded, which is very useful to know when putting it in DX coded cameras. If you go on the Emulsive blog, which is a great resource for photographers, they have a really in-depth review of this film where they actually compare it to Eastman Double X film. It's definitely got some lovely contrast and punch to it under the right settings, but this can sort of vary with how you shoot it and the contrast does flex with over and under exposure. A last thought for those of you who develop and scan your own film at home is that our users have said this film dries nice and flat, so it won't curl, it won't be a pain to get into your negative holder if you are home developing is a great choice for you. So I personally love a bit of grain in my photos so I'm going to completely lean into that. I've never actually pushed a film before. I don't I don't think I have anyway so I think I'm going to try that with this film. Maybe push it to 800. I've actually got my pen packs with me so I thought if I load my camera in front of you you can hold me accountable. There we go. And I'm going to set my ISO to 800. I hope you enjoy shooting this film. Lean into the grain, lean into the exposure latitude, have fun experimenting with it. You know this film will hold up under pressure. So you've got that flexibility to experiment and be a bit more playful with this emulsion. I can't wait to see what you get up to and what you shoot with this film. Please feel free to post your comments or suggestions or any tips and tricks I've missed out in the comments below. And in the meantime, happy shooting and I'll see you soon.